Uh, this is the first uh, sequence of lectures on inverse design in photonics. And today we'll provide a brief introduction. Uh, computational design in photonics is very common. Uh, in uh, many cases, uh, we are trying to design uh, structures to satisfy a particular functionality. And for that purpose, we would need to tune the parameter of the device uh, until it reached that functionality. As a simple illustration, uh, consider the design of a matter surface. And this would be, uh, in this example, an array of uh, uh, dielectric or metallic elements and uh, with uh, varying sizes. And the objective here uh, is for this device to operate as a lens so that if you have a plane wave coming, uh, in this case, from the left, uh, you would like to be able to focus the incident energy to a point on the right. Now, uh, for that purpose, the natural way to do the design is to uh, imagine a focal point uh, to the right of this device, and then you will adjust the tunable element, in this case, for example, the radii of the cylinders, such that eventually the light is focused into this region. And therefore, uh, you can define an objective function as the amount of energy that get focused inside the focal region. So then the computational design of this device become an optimization problem where you try to maximize the objective function by tweaking the parameters associated with these tunable elements. Uh, very closely related to these optimization problem uh, is the sensitivity analysis. Suppose you already have a device that work, uh, in this case, a device that focus. Now, a natural question, especially for experimental implementation, uh, concerns the sensitivity of device. In other words, if you have small fluctuation or small deviation of the size of these tunable elements, from your design value, how does that affect the performance of the device? Knowing the sensitivity, of course, is very important. Uh, if you're trying to implement these devices experimentally, then you probably would like a device that have low sensitivity. Alternatively, in fact, uh, many times you would like a device that you can adjust after it has been fabricated by, for example, changing the refractive index of each, these, each individual element a little bit, uh, in which case you may actually want the higher sensitivity. But in any case, uh, the sensitivity here uh, is the objective function, in this case, the amount of energy that you have in the focal region, and the derivative of that objective function with respect to any of these parameters that you are interested in in this device. As it turned out, the sensitivity analysis, as I'm talking about here, and the optimization problem that I just showed in the previous slides are very closely connected. So uh, imagine that you have an optimization problem in one dimension, meaning that uh, you are looking at only one parameter uh, of the entire device. Then you can plot the objective function as a function of this parameter, and this will give you a curve. And the optimization problem then uh, corresponds to maximize the objective function, in other words, reaching the height of this landscape as defined by this curve. Now, suppose you have a starting point away from the optimum, then uh, the one way of doing this optimization is by computing the gradient or the sensitivity. And that tells you which direction that you need to go. Then you go along the direction of the gradient and you repeat the step multiple times until you finally reach the peak of this curve where the gradient is zero. So in this case, 
computing the sensitivity or the gradient give you the possibility of doing the optimization. I'm showing you here an example using one dimension. And uh, uh, this can be naturally generalized to high dimensional system. So, uh, but before that, let me just talk a little bit about how you will compute this gradient. So in one dimension, the computational gradient can be done by using the definition of the gradient, and that is the finite difference derivative. So uh, the idea is the following. Suppose, for example, the parameter is the radius of this particular cylinder as indicated by blue here, then you can do two simulations. You can make the radius of the cylinder a little bit larger, do one simulation, compute how much energy is in the focal region. You can make the cylinder a little smaller and again, compute how much energy is in the focal region. You take the difference of these two, divide it by your change of the radius of this element, and you get the gradient or the derivative. And with that, as I mentioned, knowing the gradient, you can then do your optimization problem. Now, generalize this to higher dimension. Suppose uh, you are interested in doing an optimization for a two-dimensional problem. In this case, by two-dimension, I mean having two tunable parameter. Then you can imagine representing the objective function as a function of these tunable parameters in a two-dimensional plot where the contour here correspond to constant value of the objective function. So uh, in this case, uh, suppose the optimum solution is as indicated here, and you are starting from this point, then the way you do it is simply to compute the gradient and then move along the direction of the gradient to reach the next point and repeat this process until you reach the optimum of the design. So for this purpose, as you can see, uh, if you are optimizing in a two-dimensional parameter space, you would need to compute a two-dimensional gradient. So how do you compute gradient in two dimension. And again, you can do finite difference. So you basically perturb the first element. You do two calculation, basically by changing the, uh, in this case, let's say the radius a little bit, and then you do the finite difference. Then that gives you the gradient or the derivative, which is back to the first parameter. And similarly, you can repeat this process but now change only the radius of the second element. And as you do that again, you do two simulation and you get a second gradient. So uh, in this case, as you can see, if you do finite difference, you are going to need four simulations for two parameters. Now, more generally, in a optimization problem or in determining sensitivity, there are can be very large number of parameters. For example, if you do this matter surface design, you can imagine maybe hundreds or even thousands of elements that you put on the surface and you are interested in the derivative of the objective function, which is back to radius of each of these elements. If you repeat this process of finite differencing and basically perturb the radius of each individual element to calculate the gradient with respect to each individual element, then for n parameters, you will need two times n simulations. And this is a, uh, in fact, a very costly procedure. Uh, for many optimization problems, the number of elements can easily be on the order of thousands or even more. And for this purpose, computing the gradient in a single optimization step is exceedingly expensive. Moreover, there are other issues associated with this finite difference scheme. Uh, for example, 
Now, as you can see, to compute the gradient, I need to choose a step size if I need to do finite differencing. Now, this step size, you do not know a priori how large you need to choose. If you choose it to be too large, you will be outside the linear approximation regime and the gradient won't be accurate. If you choose it to be too small, the change of the objective function might be too small and you may suffer from numerical noise issue. And in general, with the finite difference scheme, the derivative that you calculate this way is always approximate. And that could be a problem if you need high accuracy gradient information for optimization purposes. So as it turned out, there is a very clever way to compute the gradient or compute the derivative that does not go through the finite difference scheme. And this is the approach of the adjoint method. And this would be the approach that we are going to discuss in more details in subsequent lectures. One of the remarkable things about the adjoint method is that no matter how many parameters you are interested in to compute the gradient of the cost function with respect to these number parameters only require two full simulation of the device and that's independent of n and moreover the computation by construction give exact gradient generally without uh, any uh, approximation and uh, there's no need to choose the step size so this is the kind of method that's very widely used in modern optimization of devices and uh, uh, that's what we will be talking about next time thank you for your attention here